All right. So now just moving along, we have got a person who is very well known to us. She is the director of Nosseral and an institution in her own right. She's our department's very own autocorrector of grammar, spelling and pronunciation. And I'm so I'm very conscious of all that I'm saying right now on this Zoom link. Uh, our beloved Prof Tunku Sara. Just as a reminder, Prof, don't forget to number your slides. Hello, everybody. I'm here with my <laughs> with Zati at the back helping me. Um, and uh, my talk uh, is everything outside orthopedics. So Dee, thank you so much. She really saved my life. Okay, so uh, everything outside orthopedics. So here we are. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, we are really very proud of all of you sparkling new orthopedic surgeons. Hi, Dad. <laughs> um, so, outside orthopedics. This is the summary of my talk. This is my mother. Uh, she was born in Penang, graduated from the Royal Academy of Music in London. She uh, graduated uh, majoring in piano and accompaniment, and her accompaniment was superb. She really knew how to go in the background and shine when she needed to. And that's the thing I learned most from her. Her musicality was amazing. She was able to, um, she was able to bring out all the emotion in the music. It was amazing. And my father, hi dad, I can see him there. He is an accountant. He has now been an accountant for 50 years, but he's also, he was also a pro proud sportsman. He was the captain of his football club in Bristol University. He played for Corinthian Casuals, a very highly esteemed uh, um, amateur team in UK. Uh, and when he came back to Malaysia, he played golf and he was a strong patriot. He adored Tunku Abdul Rahman, his uncle. He was a very proud uh, Malaysian and a proud Kadahan. And they met in Malaysia Hall in London. They married in a mosque in London. And when, we, when they were, uh, came back to Malaysia, there was music in the house all the time. There was always reviews from my father's colleagues and we used to uh, host shows. And we used to follow my mom who would accompany Slangor Philharmonic Society shows. As for sports, there was sports, badminton every day in the back garden. And everyone took part, all the way from the, the gardener, all the way to my dad. And we all had our nicknames, Ng Bunbi or Gunalan or whatever. And my dad taught me very well that you can learn something from everyone, absolutely everyone. And this, these are my uh, shows I was in. I was in a showboat there, supposed to be a, a black person. Uh, and this is my friend, David Danker. We were in Hello, Dolly. Um, this is Oklahoma. And every year we used to audition for the shows. And we were so excited to get a little part like a maid uh, in the background, etc. But mainly we were in the chorus. We would rehearse for about twice a week at, uh, at night between 8 and 10 um, for three months before the show. So needless to say, the show was really superb. And after the show, there was a cast party where we took over the whole audience seating place, brought our own sandwiches and sang and danced. It was superb. And every year we used to have club nights, which was also fun. And the top lady was from Australia, Mrs. Syme, my ballet, first ballet teacher. She used to produce many of the shows. And as you can see, my mom was a pianist for many of them. This is the Merry Widow we did. There I am in the corner and the person in the middle is now my dancing teacher. And the lady on the side, uh, Madame Reverger was with Slangor School of Music, my singing teacher in those days. And uh, my uh, ballet classes were weekly and we used to do concerts once a year. Um, and we used to have examinations, which I didn't, I scraped through somehow, but we learn a lot. We learn discipline, how to uh, work hard to actually get the thing done, how to think of the audience when you, are, when you are performing, how to work in a team to get a beautiful show together, how to listen to your body to prevent injuries. And we made friends for life. 
And we also appeared on RTM because there were not many around those days. I met many stars, but my favorite was always the grave, graceful and gracious uh, Rafi Buang. Convent Bukit Nanas, school choir was quite good. We went around performing in competitions. Again, we did concerts and we are friends for life as well here. When I went to medical school, I auditioned with the Music Society and they chose me to be the lead lady in the medical school production of Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance, which uh, is quite an honor for a Malaysian, uh, uh, but um, it was uh, hard work. And I also had to redo a part of my first year, which was a big lesson to me. Um, but every weekend I used to go for dance classes to Covent Garden, the famous Covent Garden where they had little dance studios and Pineapple Dance Academy used to have jazz classes and there were pas de deux classes, uh, which is duet classes, which were like, wow, you know, so uh, romantic. In the fourth year um, in the medical school, we had to produce our, the Christmas show. So the first, fourth year students had to do that. And uh, Star Wars at that time had just come out, the first one and also a movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I'm not sure whether anyone remembers that. So our title was The Anima Strikes Back or Gross Incontinence of the Third Kind. And you can see Darth Vader holding on to an anima instead of a lightsaber. And I've circled the artist of the poster who is now a famous neurosurgeon, uh, Steve Gill. So uh, that was song so irreverent about KY jelly, about, every, and I had to sing a song with a life-size sausage beside me, criticizing the canteen food. So needless to say, I didn't get very good service from the canteen after that. And these were the two consultants. There were many consultants who took part in one number per year. They were very sporting. Um, our year was the French Can Can. And here's Mr. Philip Chalk, who was a waiter, a French waiter, and the orthopedic surgeon, of course, very sporting, Mr. Rashman, who was the orthopedic surgeon for Bjorn Borg, the famous tennis player. And sadly, during the show, Mr. Rashman rushed off the stage and he had actually ruptured his Achilles tendon. And so he was admitted to his own ward wearing a can-can baju uh, in front of all his patients. And the houseman came to the student bar one day looking very worried and saying that Mr. Rushman couldn't pass urine and she was afraid that she would have to catheterize her boss. Oh, imagine that. So when I came back to KL, back to the Philharmonic Society of Selangor, we did lots of shows, we had fun, but I was attracted to uh, traditional music and dance. So I joined uh, Dato Azanin in her group Swasana, and we performed Putri Satdong, which was really superbly done. And we even brought the show to Sabah. This was a non-negotiable thing for me. My mother said, okay, we are doing a show on this date, choose your two songs, and that's it. <laughs> luckily, it was all for charity. And luckily we had a beautiful venue, my cousin and then uh, my cousin's art gallery, and N gallery, where we did these performances. And another thing was every Sunday, uh, we joined the Port Dixon Yacht Club. So my husband uh, would pick me up after Sunday rounds and we used to drive all the way down to um, Port Dixon. And the feeling, if you look at the lower picture of being on the trapeze and having your hair dipping into the sea, trying to balance the boat is just out of this world. And also if you release the spinnaker, which is that pink sail and it, balloons out and just the boat moves forward. It's a superb feeling. But sadly, you know, if you get it wrong, that was the only time I've ever heard my gentle husband uh, swearing, <laughs> like a sailor, as they say. And also, uh, we had a lot of competitive people in that group, but it was fun. As for scuba diving, Malaysia is a superb place for scuba diving. We, we learned from a cowboy when we were young. However, Mr. Jerry Yip, a very safe uh, uh, teacher and our very good friend has re-skilled us and the children are joining in nowadays. And it's a lovely pastime to do in this part of the world. When I was in, uh, in Singapore, I joined um, 
uh, trip to Gunung Rinjani in Indonesia. A beautiful, beautiful place. It's a crater lake. We had to we had to camp and we had to walk for three days to get to the base. And it was freezing cold. My mother had knitted these balaclava helmets. But as you can see from my husband's expression, um, he hates wool around the face. It was just so freezing cold that he had no choice. And the volcanic ash made us, uh, every time we climbed one step up, it was half a step back. So uh, on sinking. So it was really uh, very tough, but we really enjoyed it. The sense of accomplishment. The problem is when we came back, those who were not careful with their food and drink caught salmonella. So there were two people and my ID doctor gave me a very good scolding. Uh, so we continue with the trekking and climbing with the family. And this is a lovely pastime. When I was not well, I got treated in three continents, in Malaysia, in Houston, in Frankfurt and Switzerland. And this is my oncologist in Houston. And you can see this is the uh, HEPA filtered air inside the corridor joining the buildings in MD Anderson and the nurses used to jog along the corridor during their lunchtime. And when you finish with your treatment, you're supposed to ring the bell and the nurses come and celebrate. And this was my um, physiotherapist who treated me with, for lymphedema. And she actually is a superb tango dancer. So we went to watch her doing tango. And of course, during all this treatment, we partook of all the free interactive classes, which were really very, very extensive. Um, and I was also roasted like a nice piece of steak um, using hypothermia. My temperature was brought up to 41 degrees, but these two gentlemen from, from Switzerland and from Germany actually saved my life. And again, during this therapy, I did all these other things. We always, my husband loves museums. We spent half our honeymoon in museums, but he brought, he encouraged us and we went and did collage, basket, museum and gallery visits, etc., etc. So what about pets? Well, this is one of the earliest pictures. I was proudly um, the second prize winner in the Malaysian Kennels Association dog show uh, under the children's handling section. Since then, we have many pets and now we have, I think, six or seven cats in our houses combined. And this is the head honcho called May. Everybody loves her. But our recent addition is a, is a little kitten who was living rough around our house. And we were so afraid that this um, biawa that's caught in my garden, I mean, the, the picture was caught, not the biawa. And we were so afraid that they would eat this little cat. So we used a rat trap to catch her. And here she is finding the hole in the cage, but luckily she was too big to get out. But I think she's a happily ever after story now. Another immune building is Raja Azha, who taught us glass. He's superb. And as you can see, my husband's paintings are much better than me. So I just tag along and enjoy. That's mine on the bottom. And this is my husband's painting of my mother, captures her essence completely. Hypnotherapy was something I got into. It was a superb uh, way to relax yourself. And in the end, it led to research, publications, and a master's. Yikes. Okay, and just to play this video for you of what we did. So this is Alan So hypnotizing the patient. And we had no anesthesia at all. However, the patient was under a trance. He had the surgery with no local nothing. See, this is going on and the patient is silent and quiet and just closing his eyes. And when he wakes up, you can see what he actually does. It's actually incredible. He wakes up and he goes, ah, <laughs> and that's his operated hand. Okay, how do I go to next? 
sorry, Zati. Okay, so my family. This is my beloved family at my daughter's graduation in Tasmania. And uh, this is where my son had graduated in Sydney. Sadly, we, couldn't, we haven't attended his graduation yet. These are my parents now. And th these are the happiest moments. And we try and keep them happy thanks to Dee's help. Extended family, adored. Sam Karuna is teaching my dad to paint and he's doing a wonderful job and I also join in with him. And we get joy from friendships. These are some of the examples from work and outside. And doing workshops in neon, telepo, carving, also fun. These are my friends. And just to show you an example of my tap dancing, which I got from my father, sporting father and my rhythmic mother. Yikes, where do I start the thing? So now you can see why I love it. And spiritually wise, this is my Quran teacher that I meet almost every morning on Skype. And I joined this group called Rabata, which tells us which, um, that there were strong women in Islam from the very beginning, unlike what certain people make out to believe. So my final message to my students, thank you, Dee, you have done half the job, but please try to save the world. You are leaders now. Please lobby your hospital, less plastic, bring your own cutlery, bring your own flask. No tiny little water bottles, uh, which are disposable. Try not to use polystyrene, try and compost. This is for your children, your children. It's your time now. Grow your own food if you can. Keep fit, but enjoy yourself. But be productive at your job. Make and keep good friends. They are like jewels. And be a diplomat. I always use the sandwich technique. I think most of you learned it. Whenever you criticize, please sandwich it between two pieces of praise. You are a fountain of knowledge. Please keep your personal touch and laugh with your patients. Always find something to laugh about together. This is my food that I'm growing now. It costs a few cents, but I'm proud of it. Thank you to my beloved department for keeping me sane. Thank you for the, to the hand unit. You are a wonderful bunch. Love you all. Thanks, Zati, for helping me with the talk. <laughs> and enjoy your day. Thanks. Thank you very much for that uh, shout out. Initially, I was concerned that you were going to make me go back to slide 23 and correct my spelling or other. <laughs> but yeah, but thank you so much, Prof. Kusara, for, for having set the bar so high for the rest of us mere mortals. Um, can I just get everybody in the chat to put up one emoji, one emoji that most impressed you about Prof Tunku Sarah's talk, be it a dance emoji for her dancing. I mean, that tap dancing was crazy. Uh, or perhaps we could put up a microphone emoji for a singing or even the dream emoji for that hypnotherapy session that happened, a travel emoji for all the places that she went, a book emoji for a spirituality sessions, etc. I mean, just find the emoji that best describes what was your take-home message from Prof Tunku Sarah's talk. I mean, generally, I find her so inspiring. She's been such a pioneer in so many ways, in research, in learning, in paving the way for young female orthopedic surgeons like ourselves, as well as having such a full and active life outside of ortho. And now, even now, post-COVID, she is still singing and she is still leading a new generation of orthopedic surgeons in singing and for today's Nosral Day, they have especially prepared a musical interlude in keeping with this year's theme of fight songs.